Are we, aren't we gonna go? Oh, cheese, cheese, please. No pork, brother, no pork, please. Just, just cheese pizza? Oh, what, what should I get, what should I get? What? What should I get? Oh, well, where are you guys going? Evil I, pie, I they said I, evil pie. I probably would just get cheese. Ah, oh, stop. With basil, I would throw a little basil on there. Hey, throw some basil on that. <laughs> we're like true Italians now, we're official Italians, let's go. Um, well, how are you feeling besides hungry? Uh, I feel amazing. That's I feel awesome. I uh, I'm very very happy and and I can't wait for the next opportunity and to showcase my skills and everything. So I'm I'm very happy. Does this moment almost top your first UFC win? Uh, that that first win will always be there, you know, because it's the full actual experience, you know, especially with the crowd and everything, you know. I feel like this is just to prove to myself that. I am one of the best in the world, and for me to, this is a whole different experience, you know? I feel like we go in life in little bits of experiences, and then you always remember them, right? You be like, man, I remember this. I remember when my kid was born. I remember when this was born. So I think this is one of them, you know? It's like like one of the experiences I get to tell people about. I'm like, man, everybody like doubted you, and then you'd be like, oh, you never, you never make it again. Uh, you had your shot, blah, blah. And then to come back and finish a guy that's never been finished in jiu-jitsu, I mean, in, in, like sub him. So it's, it's, it's real good. Was there pressure on you this week, or even from the moment that you heard you're coming back, to prove yourself, not just with a win, but with an emphatic win like you had? 100%. I, I feel like I said this before. It's like I got called to the ultimate fighter, right? I, I get called from, they're like, hey, we've known for like two months. So I've been training, training. They're like, yeah, you, you, you're on. You're on, right? So I was like, all right, awesome. I'm, I can't wait, you know? So I go in, do the medicals. For, I, they flew me to Vegas. I'm, I was ready to leave my team for five weeks. And uh, from Monday to Friday, the Friday comes around and the producer come in and is like, hey, you're the alternate. You, you didn't make it to the final cut. So I was like, like, are you kidding me, man? I was trying to prove myself to, and to everybody else. So like, hey, you guys want me to fight the best and to finish the best? I, I will do that. So I was ready to do that for five weeks and, and to leave my family, leave my, my whole life for five weeks just to, to, to do what I love, right? But to showcase that I am one of the best in the world. So it was very tough, you know? It, it was very, it tested my faith. Let, let me just say it that way. And, and I believe in my faith and then I have a great coaches behind me and great management and great everything. So those guys just like relax. Calm down, especially I, I can get a little crazy sometimes, but then I calm down, relax. You get, you get, your time is coming, and they got it done, man. They, they really did, and, and I'm very happy about that. But the pressure will never go away, you know. You, you're always going to go. The next fight, pressure, more pressure. So I'm just, I'm just excited. I was going to ask if that, if that pressure is still there, but you already answered. I'm just curious if um, when you're making that walk, if it's sort of like, oh, my gosh, the moment I made it, I made it. Or is it when your hand is getting raised that you feel like you've made it? Did you need that win to feel vindicated? Uh, I never felt like I made it, right? It was like me making it is retiring from this sport and, and being the best. That's, that's, that's you making it, you know? For me, when I, when I was walking out of this fight, I was like, no, I belong in here. And I'm going to show everybody how good I am, you know? And I feel like I achieved that, you know? But I feel like there's so much to go. And I feel like opportunities are going to come in and be like, well, here's a bigger fight. Oh, I don't know if Yusuf is going to do it. I don't know if it's this and this and that, you know? So, like you said, that pressure is always there. And then, the like, I never feel like I made it until... I, I, I'm trying to change my life. This is, like, what I tell people. Like, I've seen my people, like, all my people around me changing their lives. You know, big contracts and this and this and that. Like, I want to change my life. Like, that's my, my family's life and, and people around me. So, that's, that's my goal. Will you be handling your career differently this time, this this section of USC fights versus the first time you were in the USC? 100%. I'll kill Yusuf Zalal 1.0. I'll, I'll, oh man, I'll outschool that kid, you know? And this is, this is the, it's a beautiful sport, but it's a fucking horrible sport too at the same time, you know? And I feel like 
uh, uh, Rob Whitaker just said that in like not too long ago in an interviews, you know, and it's like, you win, you win, and everybody's like, man, you're, you're the worst guy, I've never seen you, I can't believe this, I can't believe that, and now everybody's like, oh my God, I knew I believed in him, blah, 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 and I was like, all to the haters, like, oh, well, go fuck yourself, I love you, but that's that, that's how I feel about it. Do you think you needed that time out of the UFC to kind of find yourself and make, make yourself the 2.0 that you say you are now? 100%. And I know I told this millions of times. I feel like guys don't, don't appreciate that. I feel like I needed that, that to get kicked out of the UFC and to really not just actually see where my mentality's at and see if I really want to do this sport, you know? And I feel like I had the people around me and all that stuff. And I was like, it, I, I needed that. Just, just mentally has made me a better man, as a better fighter, a better just in general, you know, and really appreciate life a lot more. I feel like, uh, like sometimes it's just, you get in the wind, especially on winning streaks, and you just start enjoying life. You're like, oh, like, I'm so good, I'm so this, I'm so that, and like you forget about what's most important, you know, the family and then the, the time and all that stuff, so I, I can't wait. So looking ahead now that you've got that win, what does 2024 look like? When would you like to fight again? Who would you like to fight? How many times would you like to fight? Hey, last time I was in the UFC, I fought five times in one year. So uh, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna slow my ass down a little bit, you know, and, and really take my time with it. You know, I I gotta talk to my management to see what what I need to do. I mean, I just made the number 19 look easy. So and he fought the number 14. So and I don't know if Barboza is still number 14, but whoever they give me, I really don't care. You know, I I know I got uh, a great management team, and they're, they're really gonna upscale my career and see where I got to go, you know, but they know who to call when they need somebody, so I promise you that, but I'm going to slow my little ass down a little bit, you know, and, and be smart about the fights. I feel like I've been hanging out with my teammates a little bit, a lot more, so I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to, trying to, trying to be smart a little bit, but we're, we, we're ready, though. We're ready. If, if the call comes in, I, they, know, they know who to call. Thank you. Thank you. So if I just got a question for you, or actually a few. Um, do you listen to a lot of music, like hip-hop or anything like that? Yeah, my boy, my boy Drizzy. Drake, let's go. I was actually about to ask you, so you're talking about fake people, you're talking about haters. Did you listen to Future and uh, Metro's new album? No, but I heard it was fire, though. What's up? It lightweight was, but some parts of it I felt was mid. But just because you said all that, you might want to listen to it, because it might feel that energy a little bit more. Hey, let's go. Hey, I, 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 don't make sure I listen to that, Unama. <laughs> and then, oh, go ahead. Uh, last thing for me, um, speaking on music right now, because when you hear, you'll hear a lot of the diss tracks from their end and Kendrick as well. Um, oh, Kendrick is back? Kendrick dropped a little line here or there and there, and he went right at J. Cole and Drake. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, nah, come on, bro. You can't come on my boy like that, bro. Like, like Drake is my boy. I'm going to try to make his ass walk with me bro, for, for a fight. I got to tell my boy Jason to put me in a big-ass card. So the time when you finally listen to everything and you hear it, um... Are you, I assume you're probably going to be really excited for Drake to drop a new album. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, there are some heaters right there when he comes back. I, he, he comes in with some heat. So, yeah, I can't wait. Yeah, he was uh, photographed inside a club. I think it was a club or a restaurant, wherever, that he had headphones in when he realized that he got dissed by uh, Kendrick. Oh, damn, bro. That's a brutal business right there. Shit, we're fighting. I'll tell you that. So then, just a quick, fun little question for you. What's your favorite Drake album? Thank me later. My favorite walkout song is that one, so that, so I say thank me later. All right, sounds good. Congrats on the win. Thank you, my man. Congrats on the win. Thank uh, you. We've seen guys leave, and one of the most amazing stories is when, the, of course, with Brandon Moreno. I was about to say, huh? He rallied back and stayed grounded and humble and went all the way to the top of the mountain and got that gold. You have your own story. You have your own reasons to stay grounded and humble. What, what were some of those things to keep you motivated? Because obviously you've been through hell and back, and we saw you bring it tonight when you got that finish. Uh, like you said, man, it's, it's definitely, it's, it was hard. I, I, don't, I can't really express that feeling. You know, I like call my manager, call my coaches, and be like, man, like, do, what do I need to do? Like, Oh, I don't know. And then you want to go fight outside and you like, you go from 300 people to, I mean, from a millions of people watching to like, well, there's only like 200 people in this arena now just about to watch you, you know, and to, like you said, the humble, to really learn the humble pie, you know, you're like, there's like 
to be good, you, you got to do a lot of things. It's not just physically, you know. For like this sport, sometimes we focus on so much physical that we forget about the mental, right? You know, it's like that's the most important part, you know. And like you said, to see stories like that, like Brandon Moreno, like to watch him come back and go to LFA and beat the top guys and, and all that stuff. And I feel like I'm the African Brandon Moreno over here. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to, to really come back and like you said, really more mature and just more growing in life. That's amazing. That's beautiful. Thank you. What do you say for all the people listening that it will mean that much more coming from you who has been there, had to dig deep, had to rally, had to triumph, and is still writing that story, that second chapter. What do you say to them that are like, man, if anybody could make sense of it, maybe he can. Because we know you can come from the heart and really make a message. Let them know right now what motivation, what kind of words would you give to those people going through it? I'll tell you, like, to be honest is you have to be honest with yourself. Like, you have to understand looking deeper into yourself sometimes. You know, I feel like sometimes you forget about it and be like, oh, I'm the best in the world. Like, you start really diving in and be like, are you the best in the world? Like, are you doing this? Are you doing that? Are you doing this? No, not really. Not, you're not, you know? And, and that's what I kind of, like, did to myself. And, and I feel like my message to all those guys is like enjoy the experience too as well you know i feel like sometimes we forget so much about the experience and we start listening to people be like oh man he's so good oh he's so good and you almost start like just going in that train and forgetting about who you really are you know and i feel like your culture your your everything that's that's what this world is about and this this whole life is about and and i'm you know, to, to, for me to go from 23 to 27, about to be 28 in September, you know, so to really get to see the whole experience and the chapters and all that stuff. And that's like, for me, just bringing happiness to those kids. You know, like you said, it's like failure can turn to greatness as well. And I feel like I'm, I'm a perfect example for that. And I can't wait to keep proving that to people and keep proving it to the people that keep downing themselves as well. So like you said, uh, I can't wait for that. That's awesome, man. And last for me, uh, one of the fighters we got the, the privilege to talk to kept it super real, kept it really 100 with us, uh, Raul Rosas. When he got that first loss, he said, after all that, it just, you know, just cleared everything up. And I had, like, friends I could count on one hand. Was there that flip to that, that other side of this to where you're like, wow, I know really who got my back and who doesn't? Man. Uh, you're about to give me a deep story. But, uh... Uh, I, I always been on who's around you. I, I lost my favorite person. I lost my, my hero, uh, my brother when he was young because he's hanging out with the wrong people. Uh, so my, it, it means a lot to me who are around me. And, and like I said, I, I really enjoy celebrating this win with these guys because it doesn't come by that, that often, you know, like just to, just to enjoy life with these guys. But it, it, it means a lot, like you said, like your phone, my phone probably blowing up right now, you know, and you can't even tell, right? But I know who's with me and I know who's always been with me and always stuck with me. And my advice to those people, get, get those guys that, that, that keep it real with you as well. You know, don't get yes man and, and all this, you know, like, oh man, you're the best in the world. No, no you fucked up on that fight. Let's, let's, let's get you working on this. Let's do this. Let's do that. So... I'm very blessed on that, you know, to have that and, and all that stuff. So, but yeah, choose your, choose your fucking friends wisely, man. Don't, don't just be like, ah, like, you know who's your friends and you know who's your family. So, and these guys are my family. That's what's up, man. So, congrats on the win. Keep winning in the octagon. Keep winning in life. Thank you, my man. I appreciate you, my man. Thank you, guys.